Hello and welcome to the How To Be Happy podcast with me, Tom Rouse. I've wanted to do a podcast for a long time. Uh, it may come as a surprise to you that I'm not doing one about the Wolves or football. I feel there are enough podcasts already about football out there and I already enjoy talking about Wolves on my YouTube videos so I don't want to do any more of that. I wanted to try something different and something that perhaps I could learn something from people and, and meet new people as well. So over the next six weeks, I'm going to be meeting with various different people to discuss the idea of happiness, what it means to them, how they measure it, are they happy, can we ever be happy? I think it's a fascinating subject and one which can be seen in so many different ways. The first person I've met with is a very good friend of mine, uh, Ben. Ben and I have been friends since secondary school and from that time we've disappeared from each other's lives, never falling out, just losing touch and whenever we do meet up, we're always open and honest with each other. And we enjoy each other's company as well, which is uh, great. In 2014, Ben came out as gay, which did come as a bit of a shock to his friends, but it didn't change our relationship with him at all. About a year after that, his first relationship, unfortunately, broke down. And we spent a lot of time together around them, going to the gym and going out for food and stuff like that, just the two of us. And at that time I was in a stable relationship and had a permanent contract as a teacher and two years down the line now the tables have turned Ben is in a stable relationship and very happy at work and I've recently split up with my partner and I'm looking to start well I am about to start a new job following two years on supply in South Wales which has been very very difficult I wanted to know from Ben what makes him happy and what helped him in his darkest periods. Now the rattling sound that you'll hear at the beginning of this podcast is Ben's eight week old border collie which is locked in a little cage and couldn't be left to by itself for a while. Uh, I begin the podcast by giving Ben a gift to thank him for meeting me for this podcast. A little gift to say thank you, yeah. And that's a delayed moving in present as well. Oh, to open that and just... <laughs> Let the readers know what it is. I'm a writer. Don't really drink that much anymore, but yeah. thanks. No, not since New Year's. Why? What happened on New Year's? Mm. That, was that drunk? I thought you were there. <laughs> That's how drunk I was. And it took you until it took you until July to realise, yeah? And ask. Well, um, because you messaged me the other week and I said to Mikey, you know, Tom broke up with his girlfriend, he's moving back and all that. He's like, is Tom, what? you met him in New Year's? I've never met him. No, no you've never met him. No. no. That's why I texted you, I messaged you saying, you were in New Year's. Yeah, and the man you? said, yeah, in 2019. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Just so I could have sworn you were there. No, definitely not. So you, have, you haven't added drink of amaretto since then have you right Ben this podcast right is going to be all about happiness happiness like the song happiness happiness um, right the word happiness sent to you what what do you think of what, what does it mean to you uh, well first thing food is it yeah above food. anything else yeah food so if you fed you were happy yeah well good food always about good food um, yeah, and um, just yeah, good old food. <laughs> I don't know what else to say, like, you know, if you go out to a restaurant, have real nice food. That's what it, it's more nice food than anything. Uh, obviously, if you have a bit of greasy food, that can sit on your tummy a bit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I wasn't expecting that, I was expecting a slightly deeper answer. So, like, company yeah. or friendship and things like that they're not really that important to you at least well, yeah Food. they are but well, yeah obviously I've got a company of dogs so well, that's the noise in the background yeah. the puppy biting their hell out yeah. of the cage so yeah um, yeah I suppose if you think about company yeah, it's nice to have company there's no it's like when they they talk about you know living life forever it's no point living life forever if you're just all alone. If you've got a bit of company, someone to share it with you, then mm. yeah, you'd be happy, wouldn't you? So you're sat here now with two, two dogs, and you've got a partner as well, as you, but 
Would you be happy if it was just you and the dogs forever? Uh, no, I think you do need human company. Right. Uh, I don't think two dogs would be enough. Yeah. And plus, I don't think I could hang, handle them on my own. <laughs> so, yeah. Right, I'm going to ask you a question now, which we've talked about already off mic about money. Yeah. Now, I was watching the news this morning, Sky Sports News, about Neymar. Yeah. He apparently is going to be earning £40 million pounds a year. The equivalent million. of something like £3,000 per hour, which is around about two months' wages for me. £750 in and out. Million in five years. Yeah. I saw that one. Yeah. yeah. So, Kat, do you think money can make you happy? Or do you think Neymar um, now will be thinking, oh, God, I've got all this money and I don't know what to do with it? To a point, obviously, if you can get to a point where you don't have stress about money, mm. if you get that far, then, yeah, it can make you... Not happy, but less stressful. I think more than anything, it's yeah. not. But them two obviously tie in together. Yeah. Um, in terms of happiness, when you're talking about seven hundred and fifty million pound uh, over five years, it's crazy money. It's like, how can that extra bit of money make you that extra bit happy? Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, did you hear about Robbie Savage? I listened to something about Robbie Savage where he bought a boat for, what, 10 to 50 grand. Um, and basically, he just wanted a bigger and bigger boat just because he could, because he had the money. Didn't make him any more happier. In the end, he lost out on the money. So, you know. Yeah. But have you ever seen The Wolf on Wall Street? No, not yet. There's a, there's a bit in that when he talks about... Um, money how money doesn't make you happier but it makes things easier as you just yeah. said he said imagine turning up to a really stressful meeting in a banged up old car worn out clothes you haven't slept well because you live in a dump and stuff like that compared to going into the same meeting but having the nicest car yep. you've slept in the biggest bed and, you've, and whatever so yeah I don't know whether money can make but I suppose at our level yeah it can provide certain comforts and yeah. things like that. I mean, case in point, this house, when I bought it, it was just quite run down. The previous owner, as you could tell, hadn't done any work for for a while. Take the lounge, it was dark, didn't be, horrible old green pattern carpet. Um, put a lick of paint on it, put the flooring down, got the new sofas in. As soon as those come in, it's like... You feel nice and secure at home, happy. You get home, you sit down, and it's comfortable. It's that's what it can do, but you don't necessarily need a lot of money. Yeah. So how do how do you measure your happiness then? When when would you say in your life so far you've been at your peak happiest? When you woke up every morning thinking yes. Uh, since I started working with Jaguar Land Rover. Is it? Yeah, because I got a job that I. Um, I enjoy uh-huh. um, previous jobs uh, just didn't want to get up for you, you know you, you, just, you wait you get up at 6 o'clock you're like no 15 more minutes yeah. Jaguar Land Rover you don't have that and yeah. is that do you think as well because at the same sort of time in your life personal things are happening as well and that, does no. that have any impact in it do you think when I got the job personal things in my life were on a down low um split up with someone um, and then nan, nan, well actually no that was a bit later but my one dog died etc etc mm. and then I got the job about a week after and from there it just picked up so it was you know the, since work for so you Jaguar took like Android, the yeah. solace in your, in your work like almost the yeah. comfort that you were doing something that you really loved every day yeah and it pushed all those sort of personal yeah, problems to the side yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, it, that's essentially what happened and then yeah, then it's provided a house, a new car, etc., mm. etc. Et so, um, right, a quote that I heard the other day about um, happiness and talking about comparing it to a mountain, saying that the sides. <laughs> Just pause there as the dog tips over his bowl of food. <laughs> hey, Archie, hey! Calm. So, what is the summit? This is going to be a hell of a 
edit to manage to get this question together. Do you see yourself now on the sides of the mountain enjoying the journey or do you, is this your peak, do you think? Do you think you're never going to be as happy as you are now? Um, when talking about happiness, uh, I think there's more, you know, I'm on the side uh, because I do want to start family and all that sort of stuff. So I think when you get to you know, have kids and enjoy that side of things. That's probably where you'll be at your summit. Mm. Um, but yeah, might it might even be that the summit is when you pretty much finish life. That might be where you. Well, not, I think that's not, the, not just when you finish, but you know, when think, you retire. Yeah, you, you I think thinking about that. my grandparents, I know now that they get a lot of enjoyment out of us as their grandchildren, and they yeah. they still are quite active as eight year olds. Yeah. So I would say that they are probably at their peak now, yeah. towards the end of their lives, yeah. and I certainly feel that I'm nowhere near my peak at the moment. I think the way that life goes at the moment, you sort of work towards your retirement, and then when you retire, that's when you enjoy life. Yeah. Um, like my nan and granddad, they've got money, but now they don't mind spending it because <laughs> it's the time of life where they, yeah. they can spend the money because they ain't got anything to worry about mm-hmm. so yeah. so if you're going to give anybody tips now for being happy aside from having a good meal inside your belly what what would it be because like for me there's different levels of happiness like if yeah. I hit a shot of cricket that goes for four off the middle of the bat I'm happy for about two or three seconds after I think yes yeah but then long term I think that's where I'm struggling at the moment is to yeah well uh, well yeah well going back to that going back to food I suppose that's more sort of a that'll make your day happy um well I suppose tips right find a career that you enjoy uh, that's definitely a tip you don't want to you don't want to keep waking up thinking, oh, do I have to go into work? I mean, everyone gets those days where they're like, oh, I don't want to go into work. But if you can find a job where 90% of the time you're happy to get up and go to work, I think mean, that's that's the main tip that I'd yeah. give. And then just find yourself someone to enjoy life with, I suppose. Yeah. Um, if you want children, it- have children. If you don't... <laughs> do what you went yeah. is there anything you would if you could go back 10 years and talk to yourself then when you were 16 yeah. just finishing year 11 what would you tell yourself then at that at that uh, point there's loads like choose different A levels um, yeah that's my main thing as well yeah I wish I did uh, maths and the sciences um, and then is that the, because you enjoyed them or they'd have given you a better career path both um, but at the, at the time I just was a bit fed up with school and all that sort of stuff so I didn't work as hard either yeah. um, that was the other, that's the other thing I would have told myself especially during GCSEs yeah. definitely could have got better GCSEs um, so yeah I would have gone back and said revise it's worth it in the end Yeah. so see I, like the last couple of weeks as well for me lots of people have been saying oh like oh it's it'll all work out where you were supposed to come down to Wales you were supposed to realise that it wasn't for you this relationship wasn't supposed to last and, and things like that so I've been thinking like my GCSEs I didn't try particularly hard yeah. but that's to teach me that you know I will have to work hard at some point yeah. or suffer the consequences for not working hard I did yeah. have to in a way because I didn't go straight to university yeah. so yeah, well, that's the same with me because I didn't get the right A levels and stuff. I've been trying to fix myself back into sort of a career where I wanted to be. Mm. Um, I would have liked to have done some physics slash space type stuff, mm. um, but yeah, um, because I didn't do the right G- uh, A levels, I wasn't able to do that. So, what what made you choose the A levels that you did choose? Then? Laziness. Um, just do reason. And well, especially when I chose leisure studies instead <laughs> of maths, um, that was laziness um, and fear of 
Well, not fear of challenge, but you know, I didn't. I thought maths was probably going to be too yeah. hard. Yeah. Um, but looking back, I don't think it would have been because um, I would have had Craig to help me. Um, <laughs> so yeah, the other the other thing was um, at the, that point in life, I didn't exactly know what I wanted to do. I thought I wanted to do sports science, so I chose A levels. That would help Seriously. me on that path. Do you know now what you want to do in life, in your career? Um, just where I am now, work for JLR, and probably go over to some sort of engineering, maybe in aero, aerodynamics, because that's mm. the physics-y side. Um, wouldn't mind working in like F1 or something. But yeah, if I if I have if I don't progress and stay where what I'm doing now, then I'm, I'd be happy with that. Mm. So, yeah. so you are at your summit then in your in your career? No, I'm not at my summit. Um, be I'd wrong. be happy, but um, it's not not exactly where I want to finish. So mm. I'm just saying, me satisfied. Let's let's say yeah, satisfied content. rather than happy. Yeah. Content with where I am. But yeah, it's one of those things. Yeah. Then if I get promoted, then. Or find a different job within oh. Jack Land Rover, then great. But if I don't, then I'll be content. Oh. Let's change topic just for a second, because it just came into my head. A couple of years ago, you went uh, into Raven, didn't you? Com- yes. Just completely by yourself. Yes. Did you enjoy it by yourself? Was yeah. Were you happy out there? Yeah, it was, it was good. Um, basically, I could do anything that I wanted. I mm. wasn't constrained by other people. It was only like the evening times mm. where I just wanted to sit in a pub or something, have a beer and just relax with someone else. That was the only time I wanted yeah. someone else there. But apart from that, it was all good. It was all fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> would you do it again by yourself or yeah, for that for the reason in the evenings would you... No, I'd, to take I'd go travelling by myself if, if, if I wanted to. You know, it's something I've thought now about going somewhere in October half term or Christmas time. Yeah. Uh, by myself, but I am. I'd be. I. Well, when we I went to Italy last year with Daniela and I did. I organised everything. And I I can do all that side of it, but they're just the general, just somebody to talk to all day. Is yeah. I think I miss. I yeah. can't speak many languages. Very no, well. I didn't really speak to many people. Um, so yeah, I was fine, but but I suppose it's your it's who you are, then, isn't it? If you yeah. enjoy the company more, yeah. then yeah, I suppose it'd probably be better to go with someone. Yeah. Right, one last question then. Your yeah. house is on fire. Yeah. It's not really, but it, it is. But everybody is safe. The dogs are safe. Yeah. You're going to rush back in for one more thing that's going to keep you happy. More. So a material thing. Well, let's, I'll leave you think about it. But do you think that material things make you happy? Or is it more experience and stuff like that that, that make um, you happy? See, material things, they're not sentimental. They're not... To me, you have anything, anything material that is, that's of any se- I asked this question to my dad, and he the, what he said was his guitar because he's had it since he was fifteen, yeah. and he'd rush, he'd go back in to get to yeah. get that. Right. So you haven't got anything close to like that? Do you think? Right. Let's think. I don't think I am really. Um. <laughs> you telling? No, it's not. Well, things like that can be replaced. Yeah, that's, they? that's all I'm thinking. That's the yeah. um, because I, I suppose most my sort of sentimental things are up in the loft at my mum and dad's. All right, let's let's say something uh, like that then as well. Okay. Is there anything that's particularly special right. to you? I suppose photos. There's loads of old photos of family, and you know, the, my dad used to just take photos all the time. Um, you got all the different family members. We've even got photos before I was born and all of all that, all those old mm. photos. 
I suppose that's probably the thing that I'll get, but if I have to pick one of those, or well, can I pick the whole box? You can pick the whole There's box. There's literally like loads of yeah. photo albums, loads of, you know, yeah. I think bonus print, you know, you oh, used yeah, to get them yeah. yeah. done by bonus print for what, Fiverr for a whole lot of them. So here's an interesting question along that line then. So you said photos from the past, right? Yeah. So does thinking about the past make you more happier than thinking about the future? Well, you shouldn't really dwell on the past, but then you should really live in the present, in in my eyes, with an eye on the future. Um, but in terms of that question, I'd say they're probably both equal. Um, you got to learn from the past, so you've got to look back on the past and find your happy memories, find what made you sad and all that. Yeah. But, and then use that to look in the future as to where you want to be. Yeah. So I'd say they're I f- equal. I feel I don't feel happiness when thinking about the future, but I do. I have at times felt excited about the future and yeah. what it can bring. And particularly now, lots of doors seem to have opened up, yeah. whereas before they were not available. Yeah. Whereas in the past, you can't do anything about that, can you? So no. you can only really either look back favourably at it. I think most. I think we both had quite good childhoods and we yeah. grew up quite well. So we can look back happily at our pasts. Yeah. Some people might hate thinking about their past, don't they? And be yeah. very, very negative about yeah. it. Yeah. But if we look at The Lion King, you know, when <laughs> uh, Rafiki goes and hunts down Simba and tells him, you know, about learning from the past, mm-hmm. when he hits him around the head. And then uh, Simba gets it. You got to learn from the past. Use what, what happened in the past to make a better future. Yeah. So you, that's where I was coming from from mm. that sense. So, yeah. I just I thought of another question. Now. If you've had a bad day, if you're feeling down, like Daniel Powder. Yeah. Do you sing a sad song to turn it around, or <laughs> you come back in through the door? What's going to make you happy now? Nice cup of tea. That's it. A bit of food. You've had the worst day ever. A bit of food and a cup of tea. And yeah, a bit of food. Bouncing off the walls. walls. Not bouncing off the walls, but you know, perks you up a bit. A bit of sleep. Be better in the next day. I, yeah, I've found that as well. Mm. Just go to sleep. Just, I think <laughs> it is. Forget about it. will be fine. Get home. Don't think about it. Put it at the back of your mind. Have a cup of tea and a bit of food. Sleep on it. You write as rain the next morning. Yeah. So, any particular song or anything that you, when you switch it on, it gives you happy memories? Uh, that kook song. Sure, I was just thinking. Yeah. Uh, she uh, moves what, in her own way, or, the, or one, the, yeah. the um naive. No, she moves in her own way. Yeah, you know what, uh, only not usually, but today talking to you. Yeah, because of about. The, the DVD. The, yeah. <laughs> you still got that DVD? It'll be somewhere, yeah, but I don't know where. I'm probably throwing it away. Oh, come on. You just talk about how happy memories they are. <laughs> and, uh, sun goes down, what was it? What yeah, were the Arctic monkeys? monkeys? That came on What a scummy man. Yeah. Bit of a weird song choice, but you know. yeah. I think it was just what was fashionable yeah. at the time. Yeah. Oh, well, we've been chatting for 25 minutes. Mm. Thank you for uh, being my first guest on my no podcast. Problem. I thought your dad was. My dad? Oh, no, I, yeah, I did ask him oh. that question, but it wasn't on a podcast. It was oh. just... Just in general. Yeah. So. Are you going to say anything, Archie? He has. you going to say anything? I enjoyed more? chatting with Ben, uh, oh. and I felt like I learned a lot about oh, what he enjoy. needs to be happy and what he considers happiness to be. Yes. Something as simple as a nice meal in the company of his dogs is enough to keep him content and coming home and having just a cup of tea to chill out after a bad day. I did find it interesting when he talked about his career and the impact of now having a clear career path and a job that he enjoys. Perhaps now that I'm in a position in a good school where promotions and career paths are now on the cards, that I'll start to feel like that. Whereas over the past two years, I've only been able to think about three weeks down the line and whether or not we'll be able to pay rent. If you've enjoyed this week's podcast, don't forget to hit like, 
share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future podcasts. If you've got anything you want to share with me, you can find me on Twitter at Tom Rouse or you can email theoldgold1877 at gmail.com. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.